Hi everyone, it's Heidi here from The Nest Kids CPR and Allergy and today I am interviewing Jessica who is, there we go, that's a better view, who is a, a mum who's recently had to deal with anaphylaxis and I was just saying to Jessica before we hit record that um, it's just so important to hear this from a parent's point of view because we as healthcare professionals do all these things um, in emergency situations to children every day and it beca you, beca you get used to it. I, you never... Um, it never becomes normal. You don't go home thinking, oh yeah, that, you know, that awful situation is normal, but you get used to dealing with it. Um, and you have to kind of, in a way, detach yourself from what could have just happened or, you know, what did happen. Um, because, you know, in healthcare, that's kind of what you have to do sometimes, but nothing comes close to seeing it from a parent's point of view, who someone who's actually had to do it. A lot of people that carry EpiPens won't ever have to do this. Um, and especially in such a young child, where they can't tell you, oh, I feel this and I feel that and I'm dizzy and et cetera. So um, I'd just like to welcome Jessica here now. Um, and yeah, just we'll hand over to Jessica and just um, tell us a little bit about how old your little one is. All right, well, my little one who had anaphylaxis is, uh, nine, well, he's now 10 months. He was nine months when it happened. And um, unfortunately, he's been kind of hit with like several pretty bad allergies. Uh, and just in the space of a couple of months, I have just learned so much, you know, going through all the misconceptions, um, trying to deal with the fact I did not believe that this could happen to me or my family. Even though my elder son has an allergy too, I kind of never thought that I would belong to the anaphylaxis club. And here I am. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of sucks, but it sounds like you have identified and dealt with the worst case scenario yes so at, at least now in a way you know what you're dealing with well oh, you, yes. you've, you've you've probably dealt with the most um uh the the symptom that confuses people the most yes the one that didn't look like how you would think it would look when you haven't seen it um mm. so your other son has allergies as well yes so my elder son my, he's four he has a tree nut allergy and from when I first started seeing him have hives uh, when he was just over one till now, I have just my understanding of allergies and the potential for anaphylaxis has completely just opened up. You know, I believed my eldest son was only allergic to hazelnuts. When I got him tested, it was all tree nuts. And I hadn't realized that, you know, for two years of his allergy, I'd still been giving him tree nuts. Uh, without realizing how dangerous that could actually be without getting kind of support from an allergist. Mm. And then, um, you know, I got prescribed EpiPens for him and kind of felt like a fraud because he'd never had anaphylaxis. But I thought, hey, how great to have these uh, pens in case I go overseas and something did happen. Or, um, or in case I saw someone else's child have anaphylaxis, mm. there I am prepared with adrenaline and had no idea that you know, a few short weeks later, I'd be using it on my nine month old baby. Yeah. So it was your other son's EpiPen? Yes, it was my other son. Yeah. Um, well, actually, yeah, it was my, I think it was my other son's EpiPen. Um, but I did have a prescription for my young one to get EpiPens mm. as well at the time. Yeah. I mean, it would be the same one anyway, same yeah. dose anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. so what, how was your, your youngest then diagnosed with allergies um, and which allergies? Okay, so pretty much, you know, um, when he was quite young, under three months, you know, uh, doctors kept commenting on how dry his skin was and like he had a lot of eczema. They suggested I cut out dairy, which I did, but he kind of helped a bit and then he kept getting eczema. Um, so I kind of just kept having dairy. And then the pediatric allergist for my other son commented, you know, he has very red cheeks. When you introduce solids to him, I want you to make sure that you follow these guidelines. And she gave me information. And I was kind of like, yeah, he's just gonna grow out of the eczema, no big deal, like my other son. Uh, so then when I started uh, weaning at six months and giving him, you know, some finger foods and things like that, um, I just noticed I gave him a smear of egg, like a tiny smear of egg on toast. And, and in the aftermath, he was like a bit blotchy. And I thought, oh, that's really, that's strange. But I had given such a tiny amount that the reaction, I really couldn't tell if I was overthinking it. 
Mm. So I called my mom and said, can you come in a couple of days? We'll try again. I tried again with just the tiniest amount. And once again, you know, saw some redness. Okay. There, you know, there probably is something going on here. Okay. That I'll just stop that for now. And I'll, you know, try something else. So then a few days later, I tried dairy and there was just this tiny bit of, you know, milk in, in his um, porridge. And it just was like this rough rash instantly. And they last like his, reactions kind of would last for about 10 minutes and I just was thinking okay dairy as well that's not great but okay we'll just kind of keep going I actually had contacted um his my older son's pediatric allergist to have an appointment with her via zoom that was waiting for that and in the meantime I tested peanut butter just a tiny bit rubbed inside his lip you know I had heard like definitely don't rub it on the skin because that can Mm -hmm. cause sensitization but I um, rubbed it in his lip and then it was, I kind of high-fived my husband because there was no swelling. I said, oh my God, you know, thank God there's no allergy to peanuts. And then a few minutes later, we start seeing he became very agitated, started crying, grabbing at his throat and he had hives all down his arms. So, you know, I think that was probably the moment where I realized how serious these allergies were probably going to be. And when I had an appointment with a pediatric allergist, she ordered a very expensive, you know, a lot of blood tests for me, which confirmed allergy to those three things. Plus they said um, a couple of tree nuts and sesame. So um, once I kind of got that diagnosis of, okay, there are these allergies and they're very, you know, they could potentially be serious. She said to me, look, I'm going to prescribe you um, an EpiPen because I think that he is a candidate is high risk for anaphylaxis and it was I've lost you I started, you know, trying to retest things that I thought, okay, so there's like this web of potential allergens. Are you there, Heidi? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you froze there for a second. Oh, did I? Oh, I hope, oh, I wouldn't have caught that. Which bit did you hear me get up to? Um, So that you, you went to see your, the the paediatrician gave you a script for the EpiPen. Yeah. You froze for about 30 seconds from Oh, there. that's annoying. <laughs> Always has to happen. <laughs> well, what I was saying is that I, um, I was heartbroken. I was truly heartbroken and very overwhelmed at the prospect of what I didn't know what was coming. And, um, and then I started to say, okay, all I can really do is try to test for as many foods, you know, just keep trying to introduce new things to his diet. Um, and I was just so overwhelmed thinking, you know, is there, um, is there a beef allergy because he's got a dairy allergy, you know, like you read things that that's potential. Is there a chicken allergy because of his egg you know, allergy? Is there olive oil? Because I used to use olive oil before I was aware that you shouldn't use that on the skin. It was very overwhelming because the web of potential allergens or like what he was going to be allergic to was so vast. And um, so then I started testing and unfortunately very early on in saying, okay, let me test, you know, legumes. I'll start with green beans, which he had had a couple of times as one of his first foods, but I had had a question mark over whether it once gave him hives. Um, You know, I sat down and gave him his food. I was very excited because there was no immediate reaction. There was zero redness on his face. There was, um, you know, really nothing that I would expect to see. He wasn't grabbing his arms and scratching them or his ears. There was no watering in his eyes. And then an hour and a half later is when um, the reaction actually happened. Uh, Would do you want me to tell you about the reaction now? Yeah, so that was green beans. Green beans, Mm -hmm. you know, like I thought of a green bean as the same as a carrot or a potato, just... I know, we we do see, so things like... um, vegetables like root vegetables if you like like potato carrots things like that we don't see much obviously there's always going to be someone with an yeah. allergy to things yeah. like that but peas green beans things like that we i'd say we see that often enough for it to be not that surprising unfortunately yeah 
not obviously not as often as egg and milk and nuts that they're yeah. you know always going to be up there but yeah I'm, I'm not overly surprised and that's the thing when we do um food challenges even in the hospital we keep children for two hours yes so there's that potential it's not it's much rarer to have it that late but it, it happened well obviously it happens it happened to you but you know normally it's within 20 to 30 minutes but it just goes to show that it's unpredictable which is where the fear comes from you know yeah you know and um it really it really was because i'm thinking i'm testing something that is so harmless you know yeah it's uh, you don't think of it like that so what happened what did you know like what was the first inkling that something wasn't right well, it was, um, so I tested the food about 6 p.m., which I know you really shouldn't be testing foods that you potentially think could be a risk late in the evening, but sometimes you just don't know. Um, and then, you know, took him out. He was having a great time playing with his brother. His brother went to bed. He's sitting there playing next to me while I'm doing the washing, folding the washing. And it had been like at least an hour and a half, maybe even two hours. And I just, the first thing I noticed was that he's sitting there, but he's kind of closing his eyes like he's falling asleep, but he's smiling and he's happy. And I just thought that's weird because usually a little baby gets tired and they get cranky. Mm. Um, I kind of thought, okay, I'll go change his nappy, offer him a breastfeed, see if he wants to go to sleep, took him into the room. And I just saw like when I'm changing his nappy, you know, he's kind of, very limp, but jolting his body every so often. And then, you know, that kind of makes you think, okay, let me see what's going on here. He wouldn't feed, his cry sounded quite weak, you know, and it was just very confusing because I'm like, okay, he looks normal, but then again, something is off. Mm. And um, so I kind of held him and I just looked at him and saw, okay, his eczema that's always on his cheeks is completely gone. He looked perfect. He's you know, his ears went um, colourless. And then I just noticed, okay, wait, what really kind of kicked in that this is serious was his lips were pale and then his gums were pale. Mm. So at that point, I just picked him up and took him out to my husband and he obviously saw how worried I was and he said, is he okay? But I, I don't know if he's okay. So my husband took him and from when I first noticed he was looking sleepy to when I gave him to my husband, this was like within three minutes. So it's all very kind of very fast. You're just kind of like thinking, okay, something's not right. Something's not right. Gave him to my husband and he just started passing out in my husband's arms. So at that point, you know, it all looked very quiet. You know, there was nothing, yeah. there was no swelling. There was no redness. There was no vocal gasping for air. It was just like my baby slowed right down and became still like a little doll, you know? Uh, and of course he was a bit floppy at that point too, because he was passing out. So uh, my husband, you know, kind of jumped up with him in his arms and that's when it's just like the training that I've done and the reading of everything, you know, the obsessive mum Googling uh, kind of kicked in. I said, no, no, no. Okay. It's, lie down it's you know EpiPen ambulance and I knew those three things in that order um so we got him laid down and I called an ambulance at the same time that I was trying to inject the EpiPen which is a bit crazy because I was so focused on injecting the EpiPen I couldn't focus on what the ambulance operator was saying to me um oh god it brings it all back trying to speak I know you've it. given me <laughs> and I'm like I'm used to I'm used to emergency situations and I give, I give an adrenaline so often that it doesn't, I come home from work and it's all like normal, but hearing it from, yeah, that it's, yeah, it's, it's just something crazy. different. It's like, I try to explain it as like step-by-step step what happened, but the truth was it was like a dream, you know, the dreams we have where you're trying to move fast, but, but you're stuck in mud or you just can't kind of be as fast as you can, as you need to be. But anyway, like, I just kind of, I always had the EpiPens on my dining room table in a uh, first aid bag. So I grabbed that out, you know, pulled off the, the blue um, safety cap and injected it. I actually kind of undid his clothes because I forgot you can do it through his clothes. Now, the great thing was the EpiPen was so easy to use. Like it was just so easy. And I, rem I kind of remembered the things like don't keep your fingers at either end and injected it. And um although this was like so terrifying and it's so uh, emotional to talk about the, 
it was actually a very, very good experience for us to have in some ways mm. because I had lived in fear of this moment, not knowing what the moment would look like, not knowing how I would cope or what we would do. And I'd been living in fear of this for months. And suddenly when anaphylaxis was actually happening and I injected him with the EpiPen, it was just like, oh my God, these EpiPens are magic. The adrenaline just started to reverse it very quickly. He opened his eyes and he just lay there, you know, very still watching us, but we could see he was with us. Mm. And um, the ambulance took like kind of less than five minutes to arrive, which was, you know, obviously that doesn't happen all the time, but even if they hadn't, I had another EpiPen ready to go. And I think we would have been okay. Uh, so they arrived and they do like a check. We went off in an ambulance to Westmead. And, you know, but my son didn't need any other adrenaline. He didn't need anything else. He kind of just gradually regained um, his color and his alertness. And he became himself probably an hour or so later. Mm. So terrifying, terrifying thing to, to have happen. Oh my God, so terrifying. But, but you we survived. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you acted pretty quickly. Sometimes when a second dose or a third dose needs given is because it's not treated quick enough, which is mm. never the fault of anyone, especially a parent, because, you know, it, it can be confusing enough identifying anaphylaxis. But often that's why they need a second dose. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you acted quickly. The, I... I bang on and on and on about keeping things simple. Like with mm. the nest, everything's like one, two, three. Like yeah. the action plan is an A4 page full of information. And I never go through everything with people yeah. because you just are not going to remember all that. You just need yeah. to know these, this is identify it, lay them down, give the EpiPen. That's it. Things. And like, you don't need all that other stuff on there. Just save it for a rainy day. Read it when you're out of the woods. Yes. That's all you need to do. Oh, Heidi, my little one's just woken up. I'm just going to grab him and I'll be oh, right go back. For it, go for it. Here we go. He must have known we were talking about him. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> hey, hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> You're the subject of this big interview yeah. here. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, yeah. yeah, so it also sounds like, I mean, just in, in my opinion from the, the symptoms that you said, that his respiratory system may not have even been in, in play there, like it, it, his respiratory symptom may have been acting normally, but that was his blood pressure dropping. Yes. Because the anaphylaxis makes the blood vessels all big and leaky and the yes. body just can't pump the blood like it should, which is why they go pale and floppy. And that's, you know, that's where the dizziness or collapse or pale and floppy comes from. Yes. And but, it's funny because as, as um, you know, obviously on the plans, it does say that for young children in particular, pale and floppy is a big sign. And it says you're only looking for one, you know, it only requires one uh, kind of symptom of a severe reaction for you to need to epi and that you may not see any of those mild or moderate um, allergic signs before mm -hmm. anaphylaxis. And it says it right there, but you just don't think that that's what it's going to look like. You know, yeah, like definitely. It was a very um silent kind of anaphylaxis. Yeah, I'd say about um, maybe 80%, 80% of the anaphylaxis I've seen has started with um, a persistent cough. Okay. Not hives or, you know, the hives often come very quickly. Yeah. But it's usually a persistent cough that just comes out of nowhere. Okay. And they that that and then that it then turns to a wheeze. The second we can hear that wheeze, we give adrenaline because in hospital we have the beauty of that's our job. We're waiting for it. We we can yeah. jump on it the second it's there. So we you know we it's kind of our speciality. So we don't have to think about all those other things going on in life. They're not our yes. children. We're there purely for the allergy. So yeah, that that's the the vast majority of what happens. They don't always have often all those hives and redness and sneezing will come out after we've given the adrenaline. Okay. They'll, you know, they'll look like a raspberry. They're just bumpy and red. And 
you know, are all kind of big swollen ears, but that's fine. Like we don't care about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, you know, it's obviously the previous ones, but yeah, the fact that he just went pale and floppy is completely yeah that that's frighteningly exactly what can can happen without all the other fanfare of sneezing and coughing and grabbing and yeah yes. it's, it's really terrifying so it is atypical the fact that it was green beans in an hour and a half that's more slightly unusual but you but tell like you dealt with it really well yeah it's um and i think that's you know just that when you get this diagnosis and you read so much and unfortunately some of what you read can make you feel quite um, scared, but the good thing is just kind of reading and watching videos about how to handle anaphylaxis. It really just helped in that moment to not have to try to figure out what end of the EpiPen I'm using. Like I knew it all down mm -hmm. pat. It's very simple. And, um, and it's kind of funny because everyone thinks that I will now be more anxious than I used to be, but actually the reverse has happened. I used to be far more anxious than I am now because being through the worst case scenario, we, we managed it. And those EpiPens now, like my trust in them is just mm -hmm. like, wow. You know, I, I actually kind of feel a sense of freedom because he has this condition right now and I can't change that. But those EpiPens, if they come everywhere with me, you know, I, I am secure in knowing what, what they can reverse. Yeah, exactly. And you've also dealt with the most silent part of it all. Yes. So, you know, if that's to happen again, the chances are it will be more obvious for you because you might yeah. have this persistent cough out of nowhere or suddenly erupt with hives or you know it might be a bit more obvious but you've dealt with the most difficult part i'd say yeah, um, yeah. the most difficult recognition because the recognition is such a sticking point for everyone um yeah. so yeah i'd say i completely get that yeah i'm glad that it's empowered you and not mm. not um not gone the other way and how yeah. did you how did you feel when when you were first so this might go back to your older son like when you were first diagnosed as a family with food allergies and how to live, like how, how did that affect you? Or how did you feel when you got that diagnosis? Well, with my first son, you know, I was very like, uh, it really didn't affect me too much. I kind of thought, oh, like no big deal. We can avoid that. That's, you know, just um, pretty simple. I was a bit upset when a skin prick test revealed that he had more tree nut allergies than I thought. I thought it was just one. Um, but jump forward to Tommy, devastated, absolutely devastated and overwhelmed and just, you know, really not imagining how do I live the type of life that I have envisioned I'm going to live, you know, holidays, going overseas. We have family in Armenia and Lebanon, you know, allergies are not as known there you know, uh, what would we do if we needed an ambulance overseas? Excuse me. <laughs> Hold on a sec. You know, just absolutely mind blowing that this could happen to me. Yeah. To my baby. And I don't know why it was such a shock, obviously. Like it's like 10 to 13% of kids under one, I think, have an allergy. 10%, um, yeah, under one year olds. But I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I feel like the thing is that, with, with parents of children with food allergies that you know it can be life-threatening and food is everywhere exactly and it's yeah. like you can't control what other people are doing around you yes and that, and that is the scary thing i think with tommy that that feeling really um kicked in because okay maybe these days people are very careful with nuts around kids but who is careful about um eggs and dairy i mean it's in everything and even well, people who think they're going to be careful, if yes. they don't get it, which most people don't because they've never had to live with it. You know, anyone like my age or older grew up in a world where allergies were rare. Yeah. And they've, they've skyrocketed in the, in the last 20 years. Um, sure. You know, so people, they didn't like, you know, when I was at school, there would have maybe been one child at the whole school with a food allergy. Now there's like a couple in every class. Yes, absolutely. And I, and I did find that, you know, you have everyone wants to um, help you and understand, like there's no issue with that, but trying to explain how, how deep that they actually have to think if they want to truly cater and ensure an environment is safe. It's just, it's very hard to get people to understand like 
you know, thank you for all your efforts you made, but unfortunately, like the environment or is still kind of unsafe and really it's hard for the parent because you are the only one who knows exactly what level of care you need to take to ensure their safety. You can't just leave your kids anywhere to be looked after by, by even people you trust. Like, you know, maybe one day I'll get there, but there is so much that goes into ensuring every single outing is safe. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think, yeah, I can, I totally, uh, I can understand that as, as much as I can as a parent who doesn't have a child with allergies because I've spoken to so many parents and I, I, I understand that I can just leave the house and not have to consider. But even thinking about, I've just been to the supermarket with my two. And even that, you know, I still think that the whole nut things in coals where you just scoop your nuts out. I'm like, yeah, how is that okay? Everything. Like they're, they're at like child level as well. I mean, yeah. at least at the moment, they're all in bags because of COVID. But that's... Yeah, I, I just things like that. I'm like, I'm always trying to think like an allergy parent and like, oh my God, this must be so stressful. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I think that when he's at an age where, where he's participating in things like going out to restaurants and, and just standard things or getting like hot chips from a shop and we have to check if it's cooked in peanut oil or, you know, I think when I get that, I'll feel that more. Now he's kind of more under my control. So it's more making sure that he doesn't put things in his mouth. Mm. But even that, pretty much every time I go out, I notice that he kind of gets a bit red and, you know, irritated in the eyes and face. And I just know that he's put something in his mouth, even if it's a toy, you know, and he's kind of had that um, secondary, like, you know, contact with something he's constantly coming into contact with his allergen. Mm. And all I, all I can really do at this point is make sure that he doesn't actually eat it. Okay. If he's having little minor flare ups, I, I actually can't stop that really without driving myself insane. Yeah. As long as he does not actually put that food in his mouth. Um, that's kind of as much as I can really control. Exactly. So sorry, just to recap, he has dairy and milk allergy. Yeah, so dairy, egg, sesame, tree nuts, peanuts. And now that I've discovered green beans, I'm going to have to kind of, I'm going to do a skin prick test to have a look at some like lentils and things like that. But really, um, it could be all legumes or it could be some of them. Oh, well, he's got an 80% chance of growing out of dairy and egg. Yeah, yeah, so, that's, that's good. That's I'm, good. I'm really hoping he does. Yeah, so yeah, huge majority of children grow out of, you know, by school age, but even way before then so yeah. that would be that's great because it's not so much just about the raw ingredient is it it's what it's in it's when it's yes. hidden and that's what i find with uh, like relatives and friends it, they're like oh you know who knew that ham had dairy in it you yes know, just don't people don't know and how are they going to know if they haven't needed to you know it's it's, yeah. very, it's very difficult um so yeah and then so after you gave the epipen that actually made you feel better in a way or just or definitely yeah yeah it took, it took me just over a week i was at first like there's a huge adrenaline rush in in the parents mm. so for like about four days this tightness in my chest just would not disappear but i also didn't feel emotional i kind of just felt okay yep everything's fine i'm totally fine my baby's totally fine it was like a denial kind of thing and then after day four it was like a flood of emotions a real sense of sadness, a real, just like, uh, just, I don't know, just feeling like I can't live the same life I used to live, you know, and, and I don't know what my life's going to look like. But after that, after I just gave myself a bit of space. I kind of canceled some social events. I was just very real with everyone about what I'm feeling. You know, I'm not feeling good. I just want time to myself. And through that, I've kind of arrived at a place where I actually feel I feel good. I feel like, okay, I'm just going to focus on what's like what my goals are right now and what's in my control is I am trying to get him to have as diverse diet as possible. So every week I'm just like really focusing on the wins of the foods that I introduce that he loves. I'm cooking with them. I'm kind of getting a new thing happening at home with like how I cook um yeah as I said like emphasizing whatever you know like now that I know he can have beef and that's not an allergy that's like a major what's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> a major win for me and um yeah I can't say I've seen 
in the five years I've been paediatric allergy nursing, I haven't seen much of a correlation between the whole chicken, egg, beef, milk. Okay. See, again, it's just things you read and you don't know. Yeah. In fact, I don't think I've seen any correlation between it. Okay. So, well, I yeah. hope, I hope there's not, you know, um, that was more something that I had read on like a mum's, uh, you know, kind of like a mum's group. You don't, you know, you don't always know whether it's people's opinions or, you know. Yeah, whether... I'd say that, well, I'd say that could have come from a doctor somewhere that probably wasn't a specialist. That's usually yeah. where these things come from and then they grow arms and legs. But um, I mean, if it is, it's definitely not something I've seen in, in five years of just working yeah. with children with allergies. That's good to hear. <laughs> I would say chicken and beef allergy, but not linked with... Not linked. Dairy and egg, yeah. Okay, good to know. <laughs> good to know indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've just been kind of like focusing on whatever is in my control. Um, I'm focusing on that. I've booked in, I actually feel quite good. Like I've, I've felt a lot worse kind of leading up to the anaphylaxis in terms of the pressure that being an allergy mum kind of uh, puts you under. So I feel pretty good, but I'm taking preventative measures because my life is going to be more stressful than my friends who don't go through this. You know, I am going to have to kind of have difficult conversations with people or um, put boundaries in that other people may find uncomfortable, but they are necessary for me to keep my child safe. Mm. And I also am going to have to still continue to live a life that is great and, you know, and gives him the same opportunities as other kids. So I don't want to be wrapping him in cotton wool. So I've decided to speak to, you know, um, a psychologist just to try to like prevent myself from getting stuck in, in the stress of this mm -hmm. new life I'm in. That's really sensible. That's really sensible because people, especially mums, do not look after themselves. And if you're not healthy, your children are. My son is basically like mirrors my mood. Yeah. And my everything, whenever I'm like shitty and horrible, and I don't really realize it, he is. And I'm like shouting at him and then I've taken a good look at myself. And I've, on three different occasions now, I've um, turned my mood around like pretty quick. On, yeah. on purpose, and he's just like a different child. So yeah. if ever, my other son isn't like that, but my eldest, and it's incredible, it is incredible. Whenever his behavior spirals, I'm like, oh my God, it's just like looking in a mirror. So yes. yeah, if we don't look after ourselves, which inevitably a lot of the time we don't look after ourselves as much as we do our children, then yeah, they, they feed off it. They know. And if you have hangups and anxieties around food, which no one would blame an allergy parent for having, then um, it's going to go on to the children. Who, yeah. Yeah. Not always, but it's just definitely going to be, can be an issue around food and we don't want that. Not in the world we live in There's enough yeah. stresses out there around things like that. But I'm glad it does definitely sounds like you've dealt really well with it and you've got a good, um, a good attitude about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I am positive that there'll be some more hurdles to come and, and there will be times that I'm not feeling so great, mm. but you know, this is the path I'm on now. So I just have to do what I can to, you know, to, to not just survive this, but to still enjoy his, his baby years and his childhood and, you know, <gasps> Oh, what's wrong? <laughs> Have you milk? Sorry, he's squawking. <laughs> oh, no, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> um, no, that's great. Thank you so much for telling us. I'm sure that's going to be a big comfort to so many. Um, just the whole thing, the recognizing, the giving, the EpiPen, the, the just the, the calling the ambulance, how you've dealt with it after, um, explaining about how you felt when you know when you had the diagnosis because I think lots of people feel exactly the same yes maybe, you know not sure what's wrong. yeah it's really rough so thank you so much you're welcome we'll let him feed in peace <laughs> yeah he's like oh, oh. <laughs> he likes you know to really laze around at the buffet here so oh, no, that's right. I miss those days I, miss that. <laughs> I, mean, like, I can't do anything I'm breastfeeding you'll have to get me a drink get me a remote get me this <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh well it was lovely to chat and happy to answer any other questions or if Thank anyone you. in your community has any questions not a problem if they want to ask definitely are you on our facebook page or in our group yes i'm in uh the face i think the facebook group it was yeah. excellent all right so yeah jessica we'll we'll 
we'll tag you when, when I pop this video out anyway in a few oh. weeks. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Not a problem. Um, Lovely right. to chat, Heidi. Thank you. Take care. See Bye. you later. Bye. Bye.